welcome in. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I have both the dark and the light. We'll be taking a look at both palettes, talking about what's inside, doing some swatches, and then I'm going to pick one and we'll go ahead and do a face of makeup. If you're new here, I'm so glad you stopped by. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. I hope you'll consider subscribing while you're here and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. As always, all products that I use and mention today will be listed and linked below, so super easy for you to find. And with that, let's hop into it. Today it's all about the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. I saw these online. It comes in a dark version and a light version. And I looked at both of them and I thought, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm going to get both. Just because I'm interested in the difference in the colorway, I thought you might be too. This is the box that they come packaged in. I'll have to say I ordered it from the Natasha Denona website fabulous shipping, so well packed. I did order some other products besides these and everything came packed beautifully. Here are the palettes themselves and you can see they're very, very shiny and I just now took them out of the boxes so they don't have any fingerprints yet. <laughs> That'll probably last for another 15 seconds. I'm not gonna turn them quite towards the camera because they're very, very reflective and I'm sure they're gonna be quite blinding. The light palette kind of has a bronzy gold finish to it. The darker palette is more of a deeper bronze. These palettes retail for $59 each. Here we have the inside of each palette. You can see they're laid out the same. We have a blush and highlight in each palette and five eyeshadows. And of course the best part, pulling off the plastic on the mirror. Here we have a close-up of each palette. This is the light palette and this is the dark palette. I'll have to say the packaging on these palettes is absolutely stunning. When I compare it to the Glam eyeshadow palette, <laughs> This is a little bit prettier. Inside of each palette, there's a plastic covering over the cream blush and the highlight. So this just falls right back down and protects that highlighter and the blush. Let's go ahead and swatch the light palette first. And you know what's interesting is this cream blush feels a little bit drier of a formula. It doesn't feel super creamy. It almost felt a little bit powdery when I first dipped my finger into it. The highlight itself feels creamier almost than the blush. I find that kind of interesting. So the cream blush is a matte neutral pink and the highlight is a light champagne. So you can see them right there. Gosh, that champagne color is so pretty. And you know that blush color is a very neutral rosy tone. I find that very pretty. Let's go ahead and do the eyeshadows as well. We have five eyeshadows, three of them are matte, two are very shimmery. And the way she has them designated in the palette is where you use them on your eyes. So this first one is the inner corner shade. It's a sparkling metallic universal light nude. Here we have the transition shade. That's a matte light medium nude pink. Here's the crease shade, a matte medium nude. Here's the outer corner shade. She has that listed as a sparkling metallic medium rose gold nude. And then the last matte in the palette, this is the smoke shade, a matte dark neutral brown. Here we have the swatches on the light palette. Let's go ahead and start it on the darker palette now. Here is the blush shade. Oh my gosh, isn't that gorgeous? That is a matte medium dusty coral. And then here is the highlight shade. That's a high shine medium champagne. For the shadows, this is the outer corner and that's a sparkling metallic medium dark rosewood brown. Here is the transition, a matte medium warm brown. Here's the smoke. This is a matte deep neutral brown. Here is the inner corner shade. She has this listed as as a sparkling metallic light medium warm taupe and then the crease shade right here oh my gosh these are so beautiful and this is a matte medium dark mahogany here we have a comparison of the swatch I'll tell you what these colors are stunning looking at these palettes I think it's probably easy to think oh my gosh just another neutral palette a little bit boring but when you look at the shades they're just gorgeous I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these palettes today and thinking about it, because I'm so fair, I thought I would probably prefer the light palette, but I'll have to tell you, I'm really curious about the shades in this dark palette. They were so rich and delicious. 
I think I want to try this one today. We'll go ahead and do the light palette in another video. I've gone ahead and done my base makeup. For foundation today, I used the Revlon Color Stay. I'm in the color 200 Nude. And for bronzer, I used my beloved L'Oreal Lumi Matte Bronzer. I wanted a little bit lighter of a bronzer today because I really wanted to have the blush and the highlighter in the palette stand out. We have one more mirror covering to pull off. What is so satisfying about that? As I mentioned, the eyeshadows are all listed by where you place them on the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and follow this to the T today and we'll see how this look turns out. Because these colors are fairly intense and I'm fairly light, I'm going to go in with a light hand today and see if I can't put together a look that works for my skin coloring. I'm going to start with the BK Beauty 202 brush and dip into this transition shade right here. Tap it off. And that's going to go right above my natural crease. And I'm going to bring that down and really work that almost over the whole eye area. Boy, I'll tell you what, <laughs> these shadows are very pigmented. Today the transition shade is going to go in a little bit broader area than I normally do. Just because of the depth of these colors, I want to make sure that everything blends in really well. I barely dipped my brush into this shadow and look at how much color I've gotten on my eyes. Now I'm going to take my big fluffy Angie 503 brush and just really smooth in those edges and blend that transition color out really well. Let me bring you in. That's probably a little bit better. Easier for you to see the details. So I'm just smoothing that color in and making sure it's blended really well. Now I'm going to take that same BK Beauty brush and just tap it into this crease color right here. I'm only getting product on the very, very point of that brush, tapping it off, and then that's going to go deeper into the crease. And I want to place my brush towards the outside of my eye first because that's where it's going to lay down the most product. And once I have it tapped in there, I can start moving it over across the lid. Same thing on the other side, a little bit on the tip of that brush. Place it on the outside of my eye, deep in that crease. Push that in and then slowly start blending that in across the eyelid. Now I'm going to go back in with that big fluffy 503 brush again and blend that in. These shadows are just so wonderful to work with. The consistency is very, very creamy. They blend out beautifully. And even though the palette looks very rich and deep, it translates beautifully onto the eyelids. I don't think it's too dark for my skin tone, at least not yet. Now I'm going to dip into the smoke shade. And to do that, I'm going to take a flat brush right here that's very thin dip it into the smoke shade and just get the product right on the tip of those bristles. Tap it off and then I'm going to lay that right on the outside corner of my movable lid. Start tapping it in down along the lash line about a third of the way in and up into that crease area. I really want to keep this color towards the outside of my eye to really define that area. That color is so gorgeous. It's one of those really deep, really rich browns with just the most perfect tone. Same thing on the other eye. Tap that towards the outside of my movable lid, down along the lash line, and then up into the crease just in that outside area. Now back in with that big fluffy 503 brush and I'm just going to blend that in. I don't want to move this dark smoke color very much. I want it to stay right in that area. I just want to smooth the edges out so that it blends in really well. For the outer corner shade, I'm going to take my Refer number two brush. This is a very small flat brush and I'm just going to dip it into that shade right there, getting the product on just one side of the brush. I'm going to tap that off and then I'm just going to press it on the lid about halfway over. And the reason I'm pressing it is so that I don't get a lot of fallout from any shimmer that might be in that shadow. You guys, that color is so pretty. Look at how it looks on the lid. 
It is just stunning. Same thing on the other eye, product on just one side of the brush, and then I'm going to press it in about halfway across. Now I'm going to flip that brush over and dip it into the inner quarter shade right here, tap it off, and just press that onto the inside half of my movable lid. Those shimmer shades are so beautiful and very, very easy to work with. They've blended in really well all on their own just by me laying them down next to each other. However, I'm gonna go back in with that big fluffy 503 brush again and just really smooth that edge out from the movable lid on up into my crease. Let's go ahead and hop into the face products now. I'm going to use my IT Cosmetics blush brush and just tap into this blush right here. I want to make sure that I'm soft and gentle with my application because this is a deeper tone than maybe <laughs> might work for my skin with a heavy application. So there's the color right there. Isn't that pretty? Mm. And I'm pouncing that into the upstairs area of my cheek. Isn't that beautiful? I really like that color. What I'm noticing about it is that it doesn't lay down a whole lot of product, so it's easy to work with. Now I'm going to take my sponge and just press around the edges of that blush to really smooth it into the complexion. So there's the blush. Isn't that gorgeous? Mmm. That rosy tone is so very pretty. For the highlighter, I'm taking a smaller, thinner brush, just dipping it into that product, tapping it off. I'm going to be very gentle with this because I have a feeling it's going to be pretty glowy. Isn't that pretty? It's just a very light gold shimmer on the skin. Mm. And I'm going to put just a little bit under my brows. To blend in that highlight, I'm going to go in with a big fluffy brush and just really work that into the skin. So here we have the blush and highlight. <laughs> so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and hop off now, do the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back. Here we have the finished look. I'll tell you what, that was such a fun look to put together. When it comes to ease of use, this palette wins a gold star. Truly, every step of putting this look together was really, really easy. You know, the shadows, even though they're a little bit darker for my skin tone, they blended in just beautifully. It was almost like I didn't have to do any work. And these shimmer shades right here, I was a little bit nervous about them because they're pretty metallic and shimmery and there's a little bit of glitter in each shadow. However, when I put them on the lid, they just sort of melted into each other. And those glitter particles, although they're there, they don't look obnoxious. They look actually very elegant and pretty. I'm actually pretty surprised at how easy this blush formula was to work with. It feels a little bit drier in the pan, but when it goes on the skin, it goes on very, very gently, so I didn't end up with a whole lot of product and too much color on my cheeks. It blended in beautifully, and I think it's sitting on the skin very nicely. As for the highlight, so very, very pretty. Just a soft, subtle glow, again, melted into the skin. It doesn't look like I have something sitting on my face. The formula really is very beautiful. As for choosing between these two palettes, I think it's really just going to be personal preference. Logic would tell us that the lighter palette would really be better for my skin because I'm so fair. However, I think the darker palette really worked beautifully on my coloring. I'm really a fan of the look today. It looks sophisticated and elegant, and I can tell you these formulas are so yummy to work with. Everything just melted into my skin. I hardly had to do any blending. It was very fun to work with these formulas. The next thing that I would think about is what would I do differently about either one of these palettes, and you know what? Based on my experience with the dark palette, I could say I don't think I would change anything. Although those shimmery shades do look a little bit scary, particularly for someone with more mature skin, I think they just worked out beautifully. One of the really cool things about palettes like this is they're so convenient to travel with. This particular palette is not too big, it's not too heavy, and it really does include so much that goes into making a full face of makeup. There are a lot of shadows in both of these palettes that I think would work beautifully for a one and done. So lots of choices in this face palette. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Natasha Denona face palette, both the light and dark. We'll go ahead and do the light palette in an upcoming video. If you 
you found this fun, useful, and helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Again, I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything makeup, skincare, and style for the over 50 woman. Make it a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.